Why did Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam allow slavery and rape of the captured slaves? First of all, there is no indication, no documentation whatsoever that the Prophet permitted any women to be raped. So anybody who is saying that is a liar. They have no documented evidence of anything like that. A prophet does not rape. First of all, the Prophet ﷺ was ma'asum. Ma'asum means awesome. Awesome min. That means that he could not have done anything like that. A prophet is protected from sin. A prophet is protected from sin in the same way that water cannot be dry. You ever heard of dry water? Water cannot be dry because Allah made it wet. Sand cannot be wet naturally because Allah made it what? Dry. So the constitution of a prophet is that he is ma'asum. That means ma'asum means he cannot commit any major crimes, sinful deeds or transgressions. He could only make a mistake. So rape is not a mistake. So whoever said that, if you are a Muslim, you can't say why did the process him rape somebody? Because uh, what you talking about? <laughs> If it's a non-Muslim asking that, I understand why you're asking that because you between the heavens and the earth, you're suspended because of your ignorance. <laughs> and maybe before you leave here, you know, you'll come down to the earth, you understand me, and understand some things you won't have to say that again and embarrass yourself. So let's leave that issue about the rape thing. Now, if you're talking about the issue of Banu Quraysh, you know, when he took hostages, these was people who was plotting and planning and jumping between and cutting between and breaking the treaties and, and do acting treacherously and doing all kinds of things, smiling in his face, stabbing him in his back, giving them pieces of information, making loyalty, making loyalty with him and breaking it and giving loyalty to somebody else. Okay, they were doing it then and they're doing it now. They're the same people that we call today Zionists. We don't say Jews, we say Zionists. So there were some Zionists among Banu Koreza. The Zionists, those enemies, those pigs, those kilab, those dogs, that's what they are. We don't say Jews, Muslims get it straight. We don't have no beef with Jews. Our beef is with Zionists. Those are the kilab. Those are the poison people. Those are the treacherous people. Those are the ones who want to expand and take the whole world. They don't care white, black, Christian, nobody. They want the world for themselves and they believe that everybody's blood is different than theirs. They are the dogs of the earth. And they was the same people at that time. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inspired the Prophet about their plots and their plans and he checked them. So they are gonna be put in check again, soon. But don't be mixing it up like he was, you know, like the Prophet was chopping off heads and rolling in and raping women and taking babies and all that kind of stuff. No, you're talking about the Vikings. <laughs> Y'all understand the Vikings, right? Yeah, you're talking about the Vikings. You're not talking about the Prophet Slam. So don't be believing the stuff that you be reading because most of the paper that you're reading it, it should be in the bathroom. You feel me? You know what kind of papers in the bathroom. So did I answer that question? About slavery. Oh, let's, let's take the issue of slavery. First of all, brothers and sisters, you know, you can't take the word slavery without understanding where it arrived from. So it's one thing to invade somebody and just take them as slaves. Did the Prophet ever do that? Did he invade somewhere and take somebody as a slave? No. He encountered people on the battlefield, and if he won, they became what? Hello? No, 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 no. They became captives of war. Captives of war mean that they become hostages, right? But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to us, how you got to treat the hostage? You got to feed them like you feed yourself, right? You can't do no injustice to them. You got to clothe them, you got to make them safe, and you can't take them hostage unless you can take care of them and protect them. Is that what Allah said? So it's a different kind of hostage, isn't it? Now, when a person moves from captive to hostage to slave, slave doesn't mean the same like they did to my people in America. See, the devils who did that, that was institutional slavery. There was no institutional slavery among the Arabs. The Romans, they had institutional slavery. 
The Greeks, they had institutional slavery, but the Arabs did not know anything such as institutional slavery. It was as a result of war. So when the Quran was revealed, the Arabs already had, some of them already had what? Slaves. So the Quran did not come to eliminate it right away. The Quran came to do what? Gradually dissolve it. Gradually. That's why in the Quran you see those ayahs where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, if you commit a crime, you break your fast, you violate, you commit a sin. How will Allah tell you that you can do kafara with that? How he said? Pay the money or do what? Free the slave. So after paying money and freeing slaves, after the, when the Prophet passed away, slavery was just about wiped out in the Arabian Peninsula. Say Allahu Akbar. Allah. Now if, the, if some Muslims today in the Gulf is still taking slaves, they're not doing this on the basis of the legacy of the Prophet they're doing it on the legacy of their own corruption. They're doing it on the legacy of their own corruption. So slavery is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala recognized that human beings do as a result of war. But then Allah, he applied to it a special set of adab, a special set of rules. And those rules came from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Prophet sallallahu he observed all of those rules. And Allah, he knows the best. Wow. I always love listening to Khalid Yassi because he's always speaking facts. Like, he says, it's with all confidence that this is artist. And truly, truly, he said, Prophet Muhammad did not allow slavery. It never raped anybody. You know, he was a very, very, you know, good man, righteous man. He, he never did all, any of these bad things. So he gave an example. He explained more about Prophet Muhammad in the Quran. And it was really beautiful to watch. And I can listen to you all day long because. I always love his explanation to Quran when it comes to him talking about Allah, Prophet Muhammad, Quran in general. You know, he says it with with um with proof, with point. He always give an example to back his point up. Example in the in the Quran, and that was really beautiful to watch. I really enjoy watching. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Please smash subscribe for more. Like, share, comment. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.